Zechariah chapter 5, verse 1. And I lifted up my eyes again and looked and saw a flying scroll. So remember that the books of scriptures didn't have the separation in chapters and verses that was added later on in order to um, help readers find uh, certain parts. So the revelation of the two olive trees, the two witnesses, continues with this chapter, even though it's going with another vision. I want to make that clear. But um, I'm just saying the words are connected. The visions were one after the other. And as we know, the two witnesses bring the revelation of scriptures, the understanding of scriptures. So now we see, and he says, and I lifted up my eyes and I looked and saw a flying scroll. And he said to me, what do you see? And I answer, I see a flying scroll, 20 cubits long and 10 cubits wide. And he said to me, this is the curse that goes forth over the face of all the earth. So remember that Yahushua came to bring um, the favor, the truth, the true interpretation of scriptures, the Ruach HaKodesh. Uh, but also division, because after him, people would be either with him or against him. So he brought justification. Now, in the end, Yahweh will bring through the two witnesses that we just read in the previous chapter, judgment. So that's why they come clad in sackcloth, as we read in Revelation 11. Because they bring judgment. And judgment will bring a lot of death. Therefore, um, they were wearing clothing normally worn during uh, mourning for the deceased, um, those who have passed away. So, and I lifted up my eyes again and looked and saw a flying scroll. And he said to me, what do you see? And I answered, I see a flying scroll, 20 cubits long and 10 cubits wide. Once again, 10, like the 10 commandments, the law that they are breaking, reason why is bringing a curse. 20, numerical value of the letter Kaf, which represents kingdom. Uh, well, the, the crown and the, and the throne. So that connects with kingdom. It, it is also a letter within the word kingdom, but not the first. Um, so 20 cubits long, 10 cubits wide, like the commandments of the kingdom. And he said to me, this is the curse that goes forth, forth over the face of all the earth. So Yahushua came to his people, but his people rejected him. Now the last comes through the nations because not only comes for Israel, but also for the nations to bring testimony for or against, depending on those who are in each of the nations, if they are believers in Mashiach or not. So this is the curse that goes forth over the face of all the earth, all the earth, not just Israel. Everyone who is stealing shall go unpunished. On the one side, according to it, and everyone who has sworn falsely shall go unpunished. On the other side, according to it. Let me see something real quick. Zechariah 5. You see how it's a bit different, this translation. So let's just read it in Hebrew. But then said he unto me, this is the curse that goes, that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth, shall be caught off that's different than being unpunished right so let me verse verse three and he said to me this is you see how it says here ha Allah <laughs> that's interesting this is the Allah that goes forth and Allah, this word right here is a curse. 
That's why it's being translated. And this is the curse that goes out. Vayomer Eli. And he told me, Zot ha Allah. This is the curse. Allah. Interestingly enough, the belief in Allah, um, Islam, has grown a lot and has gone through, well, to the whole world. This is the Allah that goes out over the face of all the earth. So then he says, if one steals or when all who steal Okay, so maybe this is the reason why, but let me see. Shall be caught off. This is the word here being translated as caught off, and I'm punishing the other one. Naka. To be empty, be clear, be pure, be free, be innocent, be desolate. So that's why on one they are saying I'm punished, as in being innocent. However, another interpretation of that could be that through Mashiach, if, if one has um, broken one of the commandments, through Mashiach will become innocent, will become pure. Also, by being caught off, which I'm guessing that is the reason why they use that as well, when something that is bad is caught off, then once again, would uh, that which is left would be pure after that which was not was cut off um all right so you see they have caught off right here just in case but they translated as unpunished 11 times all right so naka yeah innocent that is pretty much the literal interpretation So in that case, um, this one will be a better, even though it's very different than what they normally translate. And in that case, let me read it again and interpret. And he said to me, this is the curse that goes forth over the face of all the earth. Everyone who is stealing shall go unpunished. How amazing. Now when we see it like that, um, I don't know what seeing well some news not all and what is going in the united states california san francisco um and well other states how they are going because of the change of laws they are going into stores and they can steal up to like i don't know if it's like 900 dollars something like that and they are not taken to jail or anything uh so people are going in and stealing everything and going unpunished and is getting out of hand when stores need to put every single product, um, well, under lock, right? Like the order and stuff like that. And if you need something like that, you need to call. Like, can you get me? Can you open it? Because people will just go in and take everything. Um, and obviously, it has been going on for years through taxes by the government and many other things. They have stolen. Um, not only money, but a bunch of other things throughout history during the apostasy. But in our time, it's just out of hand. So everyone who is stealing shall go unpunished. On the one side, according to it, and everyone who has sworn falsely shall go unpunished. On the other side, according to it. So, um, like I said, it's interesting that in the end times, this is happening in the sense that people are doing a lot of evil and they are going unpunished because of the way this world works, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. And that is pretty much a curse because that makes the world a very, very bad place to be in, right? On the other hand, the fact that he mentions uh, basically... Uh, what is written on that scroll on one side and the other side, they will be unpunished according to it. Um, once again, I repeat, it could be interpreted as according to the curse, 
they will be unpunished because of that curse on the world, but also according to what is written. And I repeat, the new covenant um, brings forgiveness for all sins. However, the fact that he's mentioning a curse makes reference to this being obviously something bad, right? And we are seeing it in our time, the worst generation of all time. Um, something I was going to mention. Then he says, I shall send it out, declares Yahweh of hosts. And he shall come into the house of the thief and the house of the one who shall swear falsely by my name. So you see what is mentioned in here is connected to what they were doing here. So once again, um, is so I'm just going to say the, the interpretation that I would uh, normally mention regarding these verses. However, seeing the word innocent there um, can be used uh, in a different way, like it's being used here pretty much. But remember that the scriptures, which were written first in scrolls, right? The scroll of the Torah. <sighs> Is there where we find what is right and what is wrong, what is a sin, and what is the fulfillment of the will of Yahweh? So everybody nowadays, more than ever in history, almost everybody has a Bible in their home or somewhere, um, in their phone perhaps, right? Because now is you can also get it uh, digital in digital form right so there's a scripture everywhere sometimes you go to a hotel there's one in the in the drawer they're kind of not doing that that much anymore but um the thing is that it is very easy to find the scriptures and i repeat a lot of people have the scriptures but they don't use it they don't read them they just have it open on psalm 23 or something like that so even the thief the one who rejects his name, they have a scripture and they claim to believe in it, but they still steal <laughs> and come and, and invoke a different name, etc. So this is the curse that goes forth over the face of all the earth. Everyone who is stealing shall go unpunished on the one side according to it and everyone who has sworn falsely shall go unpunished on the other side according to it i shall send it out declares yahweh of hosts and he shall come into the house of the thief he will send the curse through the scroll that is flying i shall send it out declares yahweh of hosts and he shall come into the house of the thief and the house of the one who shall swear falsely by my name and it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it, both his timber and stones. Timber, timber and stones. That makes reference to, well, everything <laughs> from the beginning of the house to the end of the house. Timber made of wood connected to the last who is a tree who gives fruit of his lips which are um hebrews 3 15 or 13 15 um fruit of his lips that confess the name of yahweh a sacrifice of praise therefore by him let us continually offer sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of our lips confessing his name so the last is the timber the true timber but they have another timber the world leader the little horn yahushua is the true cornerstone but they have other stone other stones false messiahs according to each denomination so their false messiahs and false leaders will be consumed by the fire that comes from that scroll the law which everybody knows and claims to believe yet breaks continually 
I shall send it out, declares Yahweh of hosts, and he shall come into the house of the thief and the house of the one who shall swear falsely by my name. The house of the one yeah, who will make pacts or swear in my name to lie, etc. So, let me see. What was I? Yeah, to lie or falsely by my name. And he shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it, both his timber and stones. Everything that they build will be consumed in the literal and spiritual sense. And the messenger who was speaking with me came out and said to me, lift up your eyes now and see what this is that is going forth. And I said, what is it? And he said, it is an effa measure that is going forth. Again, he said, this is their appearance throughout the earth. And see, a lead cover lifted up in this a woman sitting inside the effa measure. That is like a... Um, can I call it a hand? But, well, has more space then. Give me a second to just... Let's go for a picture right here. You see? An effa. That's what he saw. With a lead covering. And this is also one of the reasons why some people believe that he saw what now they call UFO. Because the shape is quite similar. And remember that they will use, eventually, um, aliens as an excuse to do something like they always do. Um, so eventually they will say most likely that there is an invasion going on, um, in order to get all the nations to work together, all the armies to become one. And that way that will be part of the fulfillment of the one world government with one, uh, coin or currency, one religion and one army. So... We just saw how the two witnesses, uh, Zechariah 4, they appear, the two witnesses. So that would represent the beginning of their testimony. Right after that, we see the book, the scroll, bringing a curse on those who are thieves and who invoke a false name or invoke the true name in order to act falsely. And now he sees, he sees an effa, like I said, the... Uh, alien narrative will come about not as soon i don't believe as uh, at the beginning of the last seven years i think mostly at the end of it but um still we see how chronologically it goes in zechariah so and see a lead cover lifted up and this a woman sitting inside the f5 measure so he saw a woman inside a woman represents a spirit, the spirit of wisdom in this case, as we are going to see, would be the spirit of wicked wisdom, evil wisdom, um, the great whore of Babylon, etc., etc. Who will use that spirit that fools the whole world, will use um, perhaps um, the... Um, Fallen angels come in as extraterrestrials as an excuse to get people um, marked and other things. So, and see a lead cover lifted up and this, a woman sitting inside the F5 measure. And he said, this is wrongness. And he threw her down into the F5 measure and threw the lead weight over its mouth. So he closed it. Um... This is wrongness, verse 8. This is wickedness. The word Risha. Bayomer Zod. Yeah, Harisha. Just with the letter Hey, the article. 
This is wickedness, guilt, the wickedness of enemies. So he said, this is wickedness. And he threw her down into the Ephah measure and threw the lead weight over its mouth. That spirit of um, evil wisdom is wickedness. The great whore of Babylon is wickedness. The um, uh, Also, uh, measuring something, like I always mention, refers to judgment. So a Ephah measure would refer to the measure of the sins of the world reason why the curse or that wrongness or wickedness comes and the fact that it looks a lot like a ufo um could be saying that when they talk about it when they mention it um we need to know that it is wickedness everything that has to do with that subject meaning they are trying to uh, deceive the world he threw her down into the fr measure and threw the lead weight over its mouth and I lifted up my eyes and looked and saw two women coming with the wind in their wings. And they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah measure between the earth and the heavens. So now he's seeing that measure, that ephah being lifted up as in flying by two spirits as storks, which are um, birds that are not pure according to Torah. So they would represent fallen angels. The spirits of fallen angels making this Eva measure that looks like a UFO fly. <laughs> so, and they had wings like the wings of a stork and they lifted up the Eva measure between earth and the heavens. Then I said to the messenger who was speaking to me, where are they taking the Eva measure? And he said to me, to build a house for it in the land of Shinar. Shinar is where they built the Tower of Babel. That is where Babel began, where confusion started. So that shows the spirit of the great whore of Babylon. Um, and if there is a connection with what they now call UFOs or aliens, then it would uh, refer to how they will include them in religion remember that the pope as they call him has said that if aliens ended up being real and they came to the the earth then that according to him well that they would have to listen uh, because they would have more knowledge about the almighty than humans so pretty much saying that they would have to change their religion, their whole belief, according to what the aliens re uh, reveal. So imagine that. So that would be like making them Elohim, right? So, and he said to me, to build a house, which is pretty much a temple, for it, for that spirit, for wickedness in the land of Shinar, Babel. And he shall be established and set there on its own base. Just like they are building the new world order. And that's how the chapter ends.